okay so in this video we are going to see the man in the middle attack on uh, Diffie Hellman key exchange and uh, the solution to uh, avoid reducing public key certificates so uh, before we see the actual attack uh, let's quickly review the Diffie Hellman key exchange algorithm um, so what we have here is um, two parameters n and g where n is a prime integer and g is a primitive root of n that are known to everyone out there and um, so we have two users here alice and bob who want to agree on a secret key so alice generates a local key a and bob generates a local key b so alice computes g drives to a mod n which is some integer again and sends that to bob uh, and Bob computes G rise to B mod N and sends that to Alice. So Alice gets G rise to B mod N. She can do the whole thing rise to A mod N. So that will be G rise to B times A mod N. And Bob computes, uh, the, he gets G rise to A mod N. The whole thing rise to B mod N. It will be G rise to A times B mod N. So both Alice and Bob end up computing because this is, a times B same as B times A so G raised to A times B mod N so computation wise this is how what the field key exchange is uh, now looking at the security aspects of uh, this or vulnerabilities of this um, so here you can see that Bob ac uh, accepts whatever he gets from Alice which is G raised to A mod N uh, the message appears to come from Alice because it is sent from the uh, it appears to come from the IP address of Alice so Bob could assume uh, has to will assume that it comes from Alice. But the vulnerability is how does uh, uh, there's no way Bob really verifies other than looking at the IP address of the message that the message indeed came from Alice. Bob does not verify that. So uh, we don't have a kind of a signature uh, that like a digital signature that tells that the message did come from Alice. There's nobody else that would have sent that message. So we need such a scheme to make Bob uh, verify that and make sure that it is Alice who has indeed sent the message. Similarly, from Alice's point of view, we want Alice to uh, verify and make sure that it is indeed Bob who has sent that message. Okay, so we don't want them to take some message that is sent by actually somebody else and assume that it came from Alice or Bob on each side. So that's the idea behind uh, uh, man in the middle attack. Okay, so let me go back. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so let's now uh, look at the man in the middle attack. So here we have a guy called Darth who intercepts the messages sent by Alice and Bob. So this could occur if Alice and Bob cannot directly communicate and they have to go through an intermediate router or computer uh, who can capture the message and suppress it or modify the message. Okay. Uh, so the dart is a bad guy uh, or under the influence of the uh, of an attacker so he can do all these mischievous things so alice as before uh, generates a and bob generates b and alice computes g rise to a mod n and she thinks is she's sending that to bob so she sends that to bob but dart captures that message does not forward it further so instead of forwarding g rise to a mod n dot forwards g rise to da mod n where this da is a local integer that dot generates okay so instead of forwarding g rise to a mod n to bob dot forwards g rise to da mod n similarly bob computes g rise to b mod n and sends to alice but dot suppresses it and forwards it as g rise to db mod n okay so essentially, Dart is playing the role of Bob from Alice's point of view and playing the role of Alice from Bob's point of view. So Alice thinks she's um, establishing a secret key with Bob, but 
she'll end up actually establishing a secret key with Darth. Similarly, Bob thinks he's establishing a secret key with Alice, but actually he's establishing establishing a secret key with Darth. Let's see what is happening. So uh, the message that Alice gets appears to come from Bob. Okay, but so Darth does some IP spoofing and makes a message to appear to come from who it's supposed to appear to come from. So from Alice's point of view, she thinks a message came from Bob, so she accepts this what are the integer value g rise to db mod n and uh, computes the whole thing rise to a mod n okay as before so which is nothing but g rise to db times a mod n okay and dot can do the same thing because he gets g rise to a mod n from alice he generates db so he can generate compute g rise to a times db mod n so that's the kind of a DVL man key exchange established between Alice and Darth. Okay. Similarly, Darth forwards G rise to D A mod N to Bob. He can compute G rise to D A mod N, the whole thing rise to this B mod N, which is essentially G rise to D A times B mod N. And Darth can do the same thing because he has G rise to B mod N. He has this D A. So he can compute g rise to b times d a mod n. So now essentially Darth and Bob have established a secret key which we call let's say k d b and Bob, uh, sorry, Alice and Darth have established a secret key which we call k d a. So uh, k d a of course is not equal to k d b. So it's only Darth who can actually look at both the messages and forward in the other direction or they can he can change the message and forward it too. So like this. So Alice sends a message to M1, encrypting that with what she thinks is a secret key that she has established with Bob. So she uses that KDA that she actually has established with Darth and um, sends a message. So Darth intercepts it, decrypts with KDA because Darth also knows KDA based on his computation and could change the message from M1 to M2 and sends and encrypts that with KDB that he has established with Bob and sends the message to um, Bob. Okay, and Bob decrypts that with KDB, and uh, because that's the secret key that Bob has arrived at, and um, uh, he will uh, decrypt that with that key and CM2. Okay. So this is man in the middle attack, and the vulnerability lies in Alice and Bob accepting a message. Uh, that appears to come from the other side, say Bob or Alice. Uh, from Alice's point of view, she thinks the message comes from Bob because IP address of the message corresponds to Bob. But she does not really verify it is indeed coming from Bob. So that's the problem. Okay. So let's look at uh, the solution for that. The solution for this is to use um, a kind of a digital signature scheme where you can make each user sign with their private key. So when Alice sends G rise to A mod N to Bob, Alice can actually encrypt that message with, the pri with her private key. Nobody else should know the private key of Alice. So Alice encrypts a message with G rise to A mod, that message G rise to A mod N with her own private key and sends that to Bob. Now Bob should be able to decrypt it only with the public key of Alice. So we don't want Bob to just uh, use the public key of Alice sent by Alice herself or somebody else because we want something that is notarized that is the authenticated public key of Alice. So uh, Alice as part of the message itself sends her public key certificate to Bob. The public key certificate of Alice is nothing but the public key of Alice encrypted with the private key of the certifying authority. So Bob can decrypt that public key certificate of Alice with the public key of certifying authority and extract the public key of Alice and decrypt this and get to get access to G rise to A mod N. Similarly, Bob computes G rise to B mod N and sends that to Alice but encrypts that to the private key of himself and sends his own public key certificate. So similarly, Alice can extract the public key of Bob from the public key certificate of Bob using by decrypting that certificate to the public key of the certifying authority. So Alice gets G rise to B mod N. 
So by doing so, we are making sure that nobody else like Darth could send these messages because if Darth sends a message as he did in the uh, middle man in the middle attack, he has to encrypt this G raised to DB mod N, which he make using IP spoofing, he makes it to appear to come from Bob. So he should use the private key of Bob, but he cannot use the private key of Bob. Okay, and um, uh, and make it make Alice to decrypt with the public key of Bob, which he cannot do. So Dart at the best he can encrypt this with his own private key, but that won't correspond with the private key of to the private key of Bob. There will be two different private keys. So when Alice tries to decrypt with the public key of Bob, and it was indeed encrypted with the private key of Dart, it won't match. Okay. So that's the idea behind public uh, digital signature. If you encrypt with someone's private key, you have to use the same person's public key to decrypt. So if Dart encrypts this with the private key of Dart, which is himself, Alice should, uh, should use the public key of Dart to decrypt, but Alice will try to use the public key of Bob. Okay, so that way, since the private key and the public key does not correspond to the same user, uh, there'll be a mismatch, okay? So that's the way that's called the station to station protocol and you and once you get just D rise to A mod N on each side you can so let's say Alice gets D rise to B mod N she can compute G rise to B mod N whole thing rise to A and that will make her to find the secret key and same thing with Bob. Once he gets G rise to A mod N he can compute G rise to A mod N whole thing rise to B and he can agree on a secret key. So we'll stop with this.